We're going to look at patterns and exponents, and we're going to briefly actually look at exponential functions. An exponential function will be where we have a number as a base, and our exponent is actually the variable. Okay? So we'll take a look at what this would look like on a graph. So the first thing I want you to recognize is I've just put out three exponent numbers. For instance, 4 to the power of 2. We know that means 4 by 4, which gives us a value of 16. We talked about yesterday negative exponents. And to make a negative exponent positive, we invert the base. And then we square it. So, in case you're unsure exactly how we got that, that would then become 1 over 4 to the power of 2. And 1 over 4 times 1 over 4, we need to know our fraction rules. 1 fourth times 1 fourth. 1 by 1 is still the number 1. 4 by 4 is 16. That's how we get 1 over 16. Okay. Finally, 16 to the exponent of a half. Now that looks different. We haven't worked with half exponents. Okay. And 16 to the power of half is actually 4. So you'll notice a little bit of a relationship between the number 16, 2, and 4. Okay. Now, a half, and we're going to get into it, is actually a root function. Okay. So anytime we have an exponent with 1 over a number, that can be rewritten as a root. So this is actually the second root, or the square root, of 16. And we know from before that the square root of 16 is the value of 4. So we're going to look at a couple other relationships. For instance, let's say we have... 8 to the power of 2, what does that equal? Yes, there we go. Good. If we have 8 to the power of negative 2, what will that equal? 1 over 64. So you start to notice a pattern. We don't have to go through all of these steps here. We know that it's just going to be 64 as the denominator in a fraction with a numerator of 1. And then if I do 64... What is that going to equal? Eight. Eight, yeah. And that's essentially what's the square root of 64. Here. So I, I put up another example here. This is base 4 to the power of 3. So when our power changes, what we know is that we're going to be multiplying the base by itself three times. So this is 4 by 4 by 4. Anyone know what that is? That's right, 64, good. Which means 4 to the power of negative 3, that's right, is going to be 1 over 64. So what will the base here? Base what to the power of 1 over 3 equals 4? That's right, that number 64. So, if you're writing it in your calculator, and we'll talk about what this really means. Again, remember, this is a root. And this number 3 tells us which root it is. So it's technically saying the third root of 64. And what that's asking is what number times itself 3 times equals 64. And we solved it as 4. 4 by 4 by 4 equals 64. So writing it as a fractional exponent or as a root are technically the same thing. You could put it in your calculator the same way for both of those. Okay. So I asked you guys to look at this. What is 27 to the power of 1 over 3? three. That's right. So what that means is the number 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. So let's actually do this multiplication ourselves. Let's figure out 2. What is 3 by 3 equal? 9. We still got to bring down the other 3. We know 9 by 3 is 27. Okay, so we might have been able to kind of mentally work that one out. What about 8 to the third? Two. Two. Right, it's the value of 2. Right, we know what that means is 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 2 is 8. So again, mentally we might have been able to get there. How about this one? Two. It's 2 again. All we're doing is extending it. Yes, Gary? So, I did like that. That means this is this number five times over, okay? We've all counted by twos in elementary school, so if we'd gone up, we might have noticed that the fifth time we count by twos, we end up here at 32. So now what I want to show you is what that'll look like 
or how we can use a graph to solve this. Okay, so we want to look at some exponential functions. So one of the functions we're going to look at is 4 to the power of x. Okay, and I think I can zoom in and out with this. Let me see. Yes. Okay, so we'll be given an exponential function here. Hopefully I can write on top of this. Uh, well, let me do it. This here is 4 to the power of 0. Any base to the power of 0 is the value of 1. So I've written this, and they've given me a graph. 4 to the power of 1, so this is when the exponent is 1, equals 4. Okay. What if we did 4 to the half? What should we be at? What does 4 to the half mean? Yeah, so what's the, what's the answer for that? Anyone know? It'd be 2. So if we go a half between these x values, so this would be 0.5 and we go up, it turns out we're right at the number 2. We can use this graph of an exponential function to solve for all of our exponents. So for instance, let's say we wanted to find 4 to the power of... I think we have to scroll up quite a bit here. What if we wanted to find 4 to the power of 1 and a half? 1 and a half would fall directly in between 1 and 2. When we go up here, we end up at 7. It's almost there. Oh, it won't allow me to hit it. Oh, there it was. We end up at the value of 8. So if we did 4 to the power of 1.5, or one and a half, we get a value of eight. Okay, so we can use these graphic calculators to help us solve solve.